example, UNESCO has, um, for many years, um, defines the cultural mapping as one uh, need for communities um, to work and involve communities to make these cultural mappings. And I, I like to know what is this remote sensing and if you could explain a little bit more, because it relates maps with cartography in a digital way and so on. Um, in the third space, I think it's more and more related, uh, makes the, the, the connection between the theory, um, the structure that was behind the, the construction of these platforms, then the proposal and the point of view of urban planning, and then the, an approach of, and a study of space ethics. Then it makes a relationship between space, uh, inside space, and then relationship with the uh, outside space, and the relationship with the uh, building housing. And um, in this case, I'm a little bit more, um, I, I have a little bit more doubts when Franklin at the beginning said, here in school is not uh, conceptually, we uh, don't have the same ideas, and I think that is good, because in this conference, in the morning, we saw that there is different approaches and different ways how to, to see this. And uh, I, uh, I already talked with some colleagues, I already made an experience with space ethics, and the results were not uh, expected. And I think David can talk a little bit about that because, uh, and I want him to, to talk about it, his experience because we cannot only depend on software and programs yet. Uh, and I think that's why I thought it was interesting, the remote sensing, how can we manage to um, cross the different kind of approaches in this uh, mainly uh, related with social sciences, perceptions, and intuitive and phenomenology. Um, I think it's possible uh, to get ways to connect uh, these uh, different approaches. So this is my resume for this session. And uh, if you want to answer, and then I, I'd like to the audience to participate in this debate also. I can explain what the, the remote sensoring is and GPS, how, how it interacts with the, the these, uh, but I don't understand quite the... I, I, mean, I want to know if remote sensoring uh, is a plan, uh, remote, sen remote sensoring is, uh, with G GPS we have a, a geographic location, uh, in almost instant time. Approximately 100 meters uh, error. Uh, remote sensoring is uh, it can be used by satellite or plane, uh, where we can detect the altimetry. The, for example, at night we can see how the lights in the city, uh, how they act in the city when they are on, when they are off, what patterns are illuminated in the house of people. Uh, it's a slide in space. It's a uh, it's sensing what what's happening. It's really, uh, uh, one good example is for uh, for example the in the streets when uh, we have those, those lights that have a device that when people when people approach or in bathrooms when people approach the light turns on. It's, it's kind of that. It's kind of automating the process of gathering information and. It's, so that information that is gathered by the remote sensoring and the, the, the GPS is exposed in the geographic information system. Mm. But there is any given individual participation or how can, uh, how is it? I, I, think, I think it's more institutionalized because it's very expensive mm. software mm. and to the and the case studies that he presents already use that kind of uh, databases? The first the first ones the first ones did, the, the ones with the for example terrain elevation and the uh, lightning systems, uh, even housing elevations. 
the more physical aspect of it. Uh, I think the non-physical aspect of it doesn't use that much in satellite or plane, but more in proximity, uh, more the way we interact with space. Not just, not about. It's not uh, really about gathering information in close contact, but providing the service. I would like to ask one question to you, please. I hope you don't find it uh, provocatory. But I would like to know in the practice how can your kind of studies help us when we are doing our projects, which is the importance of this work. Um, can I sort of answer uh, your question then? Well, my students analyze this project once 
last year. Okay. And um, one of the things is that the problem that we have nowadays is cars <coughs> parking. Yeah. So the parking is absorbing to the public space. But anyway, it's a really pleasant place because the, the way the draw, the, the gardens and the, the mediated spaces created uh, a feeling of a park. Mm -hmm. The idea of building uh, around the park, so um, it's really interesting. And people like to be there, so oh, they yeah. also interview with the neighbors. Uh, it was going to be much larger and much more in the when you decided it was going to be. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 so everything in there is a garden. So I was I can't see that far and that good, but everything in there is a garden, there is no street. Yeah, there, there are yeah. streets. That's why. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. That's why I said I had some thoughts about this method. Because I, I made this study in one part of the city, and uh, it was a, a part of the city that uh, the team thought that there was problems. Mm -hmm. Maybe because we are architects and we see things in the in the in a way, and uh, we made the space syntax, and the area was really integrated. It was great, uh, but then um, we made a, um, a like in a classical social methods, we make you know, inquiries with the, with the people, with the neighbors, and we found lots, lots of more things. So I think the interesting is to connect the different methods. Okay. Yes, because if we um, stay with this, we get results that we need. Okay. It's strange in some cases. Mm -hmm. It's just in front of the eyes that it was not integrated. I have a question for Christina. Thank you for the um, great presentation. Um, I, and I um, also wanted to, I noticed that the definition for the computation um, thinking, computational thinking is almost exactly along the lines of design thinking minus the third kind of, you know, part of the introduction of the data. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, how do you feel um, it seems like one of the problems that you're up against is the, the public and the general kind of population putting their work into the kind of web semantics form. And you talked about the software that you all uh, were developing that uh, made it easy for researchers to kind of put it into that language. Um, but you also mentioned that there was something else that, um, I can't remember what software it was, or if it was software at all that would go and look at uh, already existing data and to mine that data to kind of put it into this because kind of, the fundamental problem even for kind of information on the web is that if people do not kind of put it on there then it's not it, it doesn't exist, it's not true I'm in the category of might be true but is not known you know? so um, is, do you see the future of that kind of going to uh, writing software that might look into existing data structures that can analyze that data and formulate it into a web semantics because it doesn't seem um, probable that the majority of the population, me included, um, would you know take the extra time to kind of formulate that work and put it into that. Into that um, so I'm wondering, do you see the, the kind of future half being people like me and half being people like you who can bring the data together? I have another question too, but uh, Yeah, well, that, that's, that's a very good opportunity for me to talk a bit more about the, that distinction, which I, see, I think is really good. Um, the the static work was proposed in the 2000 and the I, 15 years ago, and uh, um, some people I worked with um, said, well, the web was very quick to take off. When will the semantic web take off? <laughs> and it, that's the way that's your question, right? And uh, now we are seeing the semantic web taking off more uh, friendly because, uh, that because of those automatic processing you were talking about. I think uh, DBP, which was at the core of that window and data, is one of those initiatives. Uh, the, the, the data in the, the, 
uh, Wikipedia is not, uh, well, it's mostly textual data, but it, there is lots of things, that lots of patterns in those pages which can be explored. If you can search on the basis of those patterns, then you can get, in a way, you can get more easily to information which then people can understand. So, in a way, uh, for example, search, that's one of the big uh, uh, markets today, and search is taking advantage a lot, a lot of advantage of automatic analysis of uh, uh, documents. So, documents have lots of uh, intrinsic uh, structure which can be uh, extracted and deleted from the documents and combined with semantic uh, evidence. So, I think most of it will be the other half, um, that, that's, what, that's where I'm, I'm working, and we are sort of building tools that get people to describe things on the go, sort of. So, to give you an example, um, if people are in a lab, they have those uh, lab uh, notebooks which are proof of what they are doing, etc. If you can get that into an electronic form, that in that book there are lots and lots of things you can associate with the experiment and constitute automatic metadata. So that kind of extra information we need, we can in a way get it going around the processes that people already use and try to get it more automatically. That's one of the issues. And in some more formal context, of course, if people are describing um, artifacts in a museum, then they will probably get richer and richer vocabularies so that things can be shared and exposed. And I think one of the, one of the issues, uh, for example, since so we're talking about the, the automatic collection with the, uh, with the sensors, sensor data is everywhere. And one of the issues is how can you find things that already exist or someone that has already collected? And uh, I think more and more the, the processes will include some automatic collection of metadata. And uh, good or bad, it will help us locate things and then at least narrow our searches and get to the people that are valuable data. I think it will be a mix, yes. Can I, can I 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 can that uh, uh, you were asked. Um, uh, w what I thought about about reducing the, the economic uh, factor in software, uh, don't you see that in, in your area? Don't you see that as a as a wall uh, that that needs? If it is like the, if the wall goes down, the economic factor it will be much easier for people to. To get the information and to access it, because uh, as, as I was talking, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the sensor and the GPS, the, the geographic information system are all so, uh, expensive software so for people like me, for example, a single individual, are um, expensive so uh, software. If, if the economics uh, factor goes uh, to, to waste, and everybody can access it. Would it be much easier for, for example, for every discipline to get uh, information? And I, I think we are going into, uh, right now there, is, there are lots of initiatives in the, in the sense of, uh, of getting data more accessible to the people. Uh, well, everybody knows about citizen science, so people are more, more, more capable you carry a smartphone which is uh, well much better than the computers uh, five years ago and so people are quite uh, enabled to those activities and then even the processes to, to extract information from that data and from for exploring it yourself I, get, I think they will get uh, much easier and, and much more open so that's my open source. Yeah. open source is one of the is one of the, the, the but not so the, 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 the open data, the release of data in more open forms is one of the strong enablers of 
many uh, innovative uh, explorations of the data. So uh, GIS is one of the examples of data which used to be quite um, uh, kept within uh, uh, proprietary systems, and uh, this is no longer the case. So more and more, yeah, more and more you get uh, data which is freely available and which is uh, which can be used by. Um, applications which are themselves more and more uh, accessible to uh, citizens. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, I wanted to know, um, you know, I, I certainly abide by the majority of, of strategies that you were talking about in terms of how we should look at cities and how uh, we should think about community input. My only um, issue would be what how do you feel about that final step when the public has to maybe comment what happens when the public is wrong and when the community is not necessarily you know their their wants do not kind of go with the reality of what uh, what the city might be so for example I'm on a, uh, a committee a city committee in Lexington Kentucky right now where looking at um, certain monuments that were put up during our Civil War. And those monuments were of men who fought on the losing side of the war. They were put up by uh, a group of people who during that time wanted to revise their history. So now we are looking back at it as a lot of, the, a lot of my country is um, kind of questioning what those monuments are. And the majority of the people in the community want those statues to stay. And I think it's not the majority, I don't think it's, it's, it's a vocal majority of the people who want those to stay. But the reality is that they should not stay and they really should be moved in is the public space, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a, an example where when we get to that final step, that kind of input might not exactly go with, you know, producing a positive effect on the urban environment. Uh, I believe that we can we can divide it in three categories, like a moral one, mm -hmm. in your case, mm -hmm. moral, um, functional one in architecture. The the function of the mm -hmm. of the urban space is very important in people that don't study, don't actually study urban spaces, might make uh, some bad choices. Everybody makes bad choices in life, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, as, I, as I said, the, the architect as a paper, uh, as the, the part of uh, medi mediating, uh, mediating. Yeah. mediating the, the reasoning between the subjects and the institution. I think that that part has to be a little bit more about ego, you know, because people would have to understand that sometimes when when, for example, an architect makes an analysis for a client, sometimes the client says, I want this like this. And the architect has to say, but you're going to regret it because you cannot, for example, have the bathroom uh, next to, I don't know, the, the storage room of your food, you understand, uh, with the same door. Uh, in, in your case, uh, the moral factor, in my opinion, this, this is my opinion, I believe that the heritage of the, the city, of the society, is good and bad in Portugal, in every country. Uh, there is bad heritage, but it cannot be forgotten. Because, for example, I, I believe in, in the phrase that, uh, that uh, Samuel Beckett said, that it's uh, try, try harder, fail, but try again. You know, I believe that the, the failures of the urban development, uh, in your case, the uh, uh, mausoleums or statues are a failure, but they cannot be ignored. They cannot be erased from history. You know. Uh, I, I guess you know. For me, it's, it's I put another example because it, it it drives kind of policy. You know, the politics of public wants and desires will drive the policy of what will get built at that particular place. So. You mentioned the kind of McDonald's. Let's say the majority, vocal majority of people want to have a McDonald's in the most important kind of public square in whatever place there is in the community. Um, 
and politicians would kind of pick up on that. You can't ignore it, right? As a politician, you can't ignore the majority of the population. So I'm just, it, it becomes, it becomes a, a kind of thin line between, you know, using your kind of strategies, which is fantastic up to that point of, okay, do we, do we open it up for open source design thinking for that particular place? Because uh, in theory, yes, it would be great if everything aligns the way you want it to align. Mm -hmm. The moment it doesn't, then we've got to get this shit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's more of a, I guess, a state. For example, you know, in Porto, we had that case in McDonald's that we were saying in the, the principal's fire, we had McDonald's. I'm not advocating McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I'm speaking about, for example, me, I'm, I don't need it, uh, yeah, why I didn't understand it. Right I, I, I must get myself outside of, of that thinking. Not, I'm, I'm not thinking about me, about what I think about it. I'm thinking about uh, like an outside subject visualizing the problem. But uh, I think that the, what you said for me, uh, what I, I kind of visualize about the uh, urban urban actors and the planners is the normally the mistakes what I think is the mistakes are normally made by institutions and not about subjects because places are developed for subjects if majority of subjects doesn't like a place or urban space for example a microspace that microspace is not going to work it's going to be abandoned so if it is needed to have a McDonald's in the square for that space not to die. There must be a McDonald's in the space not to die. I'm saying it's it's a bad thing, but it's uh, the uh, there is a saying in Portuguese. I'm trying to say it in English. But it's the lesser bad of the bad, you know. Lesser of the two evils. Lesser of the You understand? I, I think that. In this case, we are talking about something in Australia, like McDonald's, but I believe that, for example, graffiti, uh, uh, gra not all graffiters, uh, for example, graffiti has, was born from gangs and, and that it, it has evolved to become art. And the artists that practice graffiti has a strong emotional connection to where they paint. Uh, but if you look at it nowadays, it's becoming more accepted, but there is a lot of people that don't appreciate it. I'm not talking about uh, the rubbish, but every graffiti, you understand? Uh, but if you if you see nowadays, for example, in our city, graffiti, uh, like uh, the examples that I've shown, can, can become a, a framing of an urban space, can give it identity, an identity that didn't, didn't exist and can actually improve uh, the space. Yeah. <laughs> so, really, really, uh, we have to be careful. I think it's a tool. Uh, in that example of the, of the study that we made, the architects thought the first idea is to solve the problem of the public space, transforming that public space uh, to, for citizens and uh, putting out the cars. And, and we discovered that um, we thought that the houses were abandoned, but they were not. Mm -hmm. The street even that commerce. That was the only problem. But it was after make the space index, it was after make the social inquiry and so on and so on. At the end, with that knowledge, right. so it was a tool, exactly. uh, the project was not to make the streets only for uh, let's see, let's think a little bit more because the, the first solution, the first thing that we thought, it was a problem after all, for the community is not a problem. Okay, sorry. I was just saying that um, this case of uh, McDonald's in, here in uh, the Principal Square is an important uh, case because, in fact, nobody wanted McDonald's over there because the cafe where it is now uh, yeah, was a very okay. important cafe. And uh, a very beautiful one, and uh, so nobody wanted McDonald's over there. In fact, when McDonald's went over there, uh, it was the first, uh, probably the first important in, 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 uh, place in the portal to recuperate 
the, the, the functioning of the part of the city, which was not functioning very well. So in fact, it was favorable for the city. So I, I, I was at the hearing the, the questions you were discussing, and I remember that some years ago here in Portugal, we had a, a, comp a competition TV by a TV program to elect the most important Portuguese of all times, and the, the, the guy who win was actually the, our um, dictator, the one we have had until 50 years ago. <laughs> so the conclusion is that there are judges everywhere. Yeah. 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 But we have to change the name of the bridge in this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, just to say that in, in relation to your uh, comments, yes, I think the, the process and the way you structure the process where both parts participate is very important. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we start uh, on a um, who's right basis, I don't think the process is well structured. The process is not um, uh, a starting point where I'm right and you are right. So let's end the process to see who wins the right competition, who's right. I think the, the, the difficulty in this kind of approach to urban um, planning uh, is precisely the balance between what is the administrative, the bureaucratic, the legislative a framework of all these issues relating urban transformation, urban morphology, uh, urban process, urban um, questions, whatever, that are almost set in a wide scale, in a wide uh, um, framework of issues. And the thing that worries Mr. Mike McKay or Mr. David, it's my my issue, it's my universe of things that I can domain, but uh, the process is to be able to combine all of these scale of things. The ones more personal, the one more collective, the one more administrative, the one more bureaucratic, more the, those related with infrastructure that are common to all of us. And uh, uh, the, the, the way the process is structured, for me, is, it's really the hard thing to Established, if we are able to, 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 to get a very good structure or good in, in not, not in terms of qualitative but in terms of the operational uh, dimension of the process, if, if that structure is well set, it's set in a, in a balanced way, I think this kind of discussion between what is right or what is not so right or wrong is not. They, they turn out to be the, the main issues. They, they will get over um, naturally within the process. So why? Because I think if the process is well said, we, we all learn from it. And we all learn with each other. And by learning with each other, I may think that uh, our different positions are, after all, not so different. So I think the, the balance is, is very a, a very hard thing to get, but it's, it's the thing that we should try to get. And I think that this kind of approach that I also think they are very interesting, they are walking in that way, uh, trying to uh, uh, head uh, different layers and different scales of issues on a wider range of planning uh, approach that are sometimes very general, very pragmatic, very uh, you know, upper scales, but then they fail when they have to deal with the everyday thing, with the, with the, with the, 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 the Mike McKay issues and the David issues and the Fred issues and the, the issues of all, of all of us. So where is the platform where all the issues that are common to us exist and where is the platform of our own issues? So I think that's the, the discussion here. It's, it's interesting. Well, I think yeah. the last question. That's my. Let's <laughs> 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 stay for, for the end, for the end, because uh, 
Uh, my question is to, to Christina, and uh, it's not quite a question, it's, it's, it's a child question, okay? And we, all, we are all talking about uh, different, different strategies of taking architecture or something else, but there's something that it's, it's uh, that question, that child question. Okay, okay. we invent, we, we uh, humans invent the language, the language as the way of communication, and we invent the language of computing. We put one and zero and make the computers working. And then the computers make another language. They need more. And they create a new language that puts us to learn a new way of communicating uh, with computers and computing with uh, different ways of, uh, of knowledge. So my question is, if we can make uh, a language that goes everywhere in that semantic web, because I, 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 when I see the, the, the graphics and I see that, okay, that language with so many symbols and letters, it will be quite, quite difficult for everyone to establish a way of communication as, as myself or as everyone because that kind of language have some we have gaps between that language so the problem is we need to think how can, how can be the language that we can communicate even with, with <coughs> even with that uh, uh, semantic web and I think semantic is so wonderful the word uh, itself and how we can make that language. I think the next, the next step in computing is not one and zero, it's one to nine. When we do that to one to nine, maybe we, ha we can have another language and we all understand what we are, we are all saying and everything, everything we can share because today we have a gap between the logic logical language of computing and the non-logical language of ourselves. So, my question is, how about the new language? Well, this is getting a bit philosophic, but that's interesting. Well, that's one thing I really, that's an interesting, very interesting point of view. There's one thing which um, I wouldn't agree with is, um, Going from zero to one to zero to nine is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. The, the expressive power is. Uh, uh, there is a, a question which is typically handled in uh, computer science, which is what is the expressiveness of a language? And I don't think either that our natural language is illogical. Logical is deeply ingrained in our uh, natural language. So it's uh, uh, a bit of a more flexible logic, but logic is there. Otherwise, we couldn't reason uh, by right. talking in natural language. Um, so I think that gap that you were talking about, that, that's a very interesting point of view because there is that gap. You see, well, well, in the computer, all ones and zeros, and that's irrelevant. It could be computing with the cells. It's the yes. same thing. Because the, the, the underlying principles have been established, and the, there are limits to what can be computed, but not because of the ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, so I think that gap is getting narrower because, um, well, um, we have, uh, in all our devices, we are getting the interfaces to get near uh, a more natural expression of, of our thoughts. But if our thoughts are not clear, there is no way the machine will make them clear, right? So in a way, um, what I've been talking about the semantic web is getting uh, formalizing the things about which we already have some agreements and uh, uh, well-established thoughts. Yeah. In that case, we can put it down and make a, a lot of computation. And wh why, why, do we, why do we need all, all, this all this machinery? I think it's because of complexity. Because 
yeah. the world, the, the, the part of the world that we are aiming at understanding and manipulating is getting wider and wider, right? Yes. We expect things from computers which they can deliver, for sure. But um, I think there is lots of uh, knowledge that is very well formalized in people's heads and which can be shared. And that's the part that we can, well, uh, at least uh, uh, practically aim to uh, capture with semantic web things. Okay. Thanks so much. I think this is a good example of what we like to do is to debate the questions not about really trying to finish uh, the issues but uh, we are not afraid to debate and uh, it's necessary well, in the organization of the symposium we have made the effort uh, so that anyone can speak uh, and debate a lot of time. In many situations we observe that uh, speaker is not uh, finishing talking and the other one is trying to <laughs> initiate uh, well, you know, have a certain, a certain time to, to pause, to break away. <coughs> well, uh, I'm not talking about space syntax because uh, we will have other opportunities, specific to other sessions will be present. About ontologies, I would like to say one or two things. Well, in the first is something of the bill. Here we have some universities not all on school. Uh, and uh, we are in the school, we are making a net on the development of the ontologies architecture. Well, the first uh, next study uh, was on the space index. Uh, with some direction <laughs> we will, we, you will see. Uh, but uh, now we are getting uh, something on ontologies. Ontologies are uh, well, some poor, uh, rather or other uh, formal methods. Uh, but uh, we think that because they are not so developed, I know uh, I'm talking about architecture, but <laughs> space syntax is uh, very well developed. Other ship rams, and they have uh, several, many uh, groups all over the world working on it. Uh, ontologies is one uh, that uh, is not so well developed in uh, architecture. architecture. Uh, and, uh, but we think it has a very, uh, very great potential. Uh, well, uh, if I talk uh, on the, on the well, conversations I have, uh, for example, with Christina on that subject, uh, it, will, it will be very long. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not going to do that way. But um, well, it's some sort of invitation. Uh, we have already uh, some talks with other schools, for example. Uh, engineering faculty, the science faculty of uh, Port University with the maths group, with mathematics group, uh, with uh, Lisbon, uh, with uh, foreign uh, uh, universities uh, to create uh, a great team to develop uh, uh, well, uh, ontological, uh, ontological method, or ontological methods to create, uh, to, to apply in uh, Architecture. Well, this is uh, an invitation. Uh, uh, when we'll, if you want to participate, you will see any kind of uh, of uh, interest in our schools to participate in, in this kind of effort because uh, uh, these efforts need need uh, uh, great participation from uh, some some countries, not only one, but. Uh, from many groups of uh, uh, several countries, uh, uh, we will be very pleased. Uh, we are trying to participate in uh, one program of the Horizon 2020. I think all of you know uh, the program, and uh, well, this is an invitation. Uh, 
And uh, I would say this is not only for architects, obviously. Christina has spared us from the uh, technical intricacies of doing uh, some, uh, some sentence in uh, oh, oh, uh, to define a, a single concept in uh, oh, well, really well, because it's very hard for an architect to uh, say very, very, very sharp, very hard uh, job. Uh, but uh, we need uh, work to uh, engineers doing the mass market, the, mass, the, the mathematicians do, and so on. It has to be a uh, group with uh, several for the, the knowledge and the skills. Uh, every every uh, one of those skills are very interesting, uh, uh, although Architects don't have the, the, the appeal to, to enter in the technical uh, intricacies. Uh, uh, for example, Freddy developed in the first uh, part of his presentation a uh, uh, very well scheme of uh, uh, <coughs> uh, first scheme of architectural ontology, uh, I think. Uh, well, uh, the architects are absolutely necessary to create that because it's not uh, the engineer that is going to create that. Well, he can tra translate that in, uh, in the language, in, uh, to protege and uh, write something, but he is not going to create uh, the ontology. And so it must be a uh, correlation uh, between those, uh, those several uh, skills. Uh, that's all. Well, thank you so much. Um, we are now going to lunch. We have, yeah. You have in the briefcase the... I have the keys. Uh, okay, okay. I'm, uh, I will be here at uh, 5 to 3. Okay. okay. And you can leave things if you want. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.